Welcome back to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer Thomason with my 25 years of development experience. Here at Startup Hack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in as little as three months. Today, we're diving into the pipeline pattern in C Sharp, a design pattern that can help you write cleaner, more maintainable code. This pattern is especially useful for handling complex sequences of operations in a streamlined manner. So let's break this down and dig into our video. All right, so we're going to dive into talking about the pipeline pattern in C Sharp. <clears throat> All right, so the pipeline pattern is a design pattern that allows you to chain together a series of processing steps or stages in a clear and organized manner. Each stage in the pipeline process inputs a per input, performs a specific task, passes the results to the next stage. This pattern is highly beneficial for scenarios where we have multiple operations that need to be applied sequentially. By using the pipeline pattern, you can encapsulate each operation, making your code more modular and easier to manage. Now, one of the big benefits of using the pipeline pattern is its ability to promote separation of concern. Each stage in the pipeline focuses on a single task, which makes the code easier to understand and maintain. Additionally, the pipeline pattern enhances reusability as individual stages can be reused in different pipelines. This modular approach also simplifies testing, allows you to test each stage independently. Now, the main concept here is that the core basis is to create a chain of multiple steps where each step works with a result from the previous one. So step A feeds into step B and step B feeds into step C. In this image, we can see a simple example of the pipeline definition. Step A is the first that receives the input and makes something. After that, the result is passed on to step B. That one applies other specific logic and returns a result to make the next step. The last one in the chain is step C, and this one is responsible for publishing the results of the entire pipeline. Now, it's a good design pattern to simplify complex business processes. Imagine you have one problem, have a problem that requires multiple steps to achieve a final result. Once you have a good separation of responsibilities, you're in a good spot to define the concern for each step and at the end for each pipeline. Another nice point is the fact that you could align your documentation with your code. Each step will have a definition, and that definition will have a direct relation to your code in your next step. So it's a simple system. It could be too complex to solve each problem. However, in a huge system, this is a great pattern to use. Now, the pipeline pattern is widely used in various real-world applications. For instance, it's common in data processing pipelines where data needs to be transformed through multiple steps before reaching its final platform. It's also useful in web request processes where requests pass through several middleware components. Now, one of the places where we really see this is in DevOps, right? In DevOps and CI CD, you frequently see different build steps, and this is the reason why YAML is used and very effectively. So let's dive into the code because we always have code samples here at Startup Hack. So make sure you check out the comments down below and pull down our code samples because these code samples have hundreds of samples in them, lots of really good stuff, and today's is going to be no different. So let's dive into those code samples. All right, so again, make sure you pull down, the, pull down those code samples. This code sample is a great example of, how, of, the design, of the pipeline pattern and this design and shows how easy it is for this to run. And you see how little code we have here. We've just got three files, and some are just a few lines. So, of course, we start off with our I pipeline, uh, with our interface, our pipeline steps, right, which just is a process T. Then we can see the actual implementation of this using the pipeline uh, of type T. And we can see a list of iPipeline steps, right? And so this is the, sorry, I'm looking at this out of the corner of my eye for you guys to be able to see it here. But this is the pipeline steps, right, where we have the process. Then we return a pipeline step, and we can see that our implementation here of the pipeline class has the add step and then the execute, right, which will execute on type T. Now, um, and then we can see the implementation of this here in our program file. So we can see that we create a new pipeline. We then add these steps, and you can see how simple it is to add steps. We just add steps one, two, and three. Then we give the input of hello world, and we can execute these. So let's set up our breakpoint, and as always, we try to give you executable code. So let's give this guy a world today, and let's give this a try. Nothing like a live demo, right? So as, we, uh, as we're cruising through this here, we can see that we're going to create our first pipeline, and we added steps one, two, and three. We give it the input of hello world, with, and we execute on the first step in our pipeline, right? So let's take a look here at what we get. 
Now we can then out write the, out, the input and the output. And let's take a look here at what those inputs and output are. So our input is hello world, and we can see that it uppercased it to hello underscore wo score world. Now why did it do that? Because as it passed in step one, um, as it passed in step one, we can see that each of these is going to loop through these steps on the execute, right? And it's going to process these steps, returning the results, right? And so we can see that it works through each of these and process those. And we can see that it gave the output uh, of, of this and then stops, right? So as we work through this, we can see that our implementations here, right? So step one grabs it and does the two upper. So this is the part that does all the two upper. Step two is what replaced the space with the uh, underscore. And step three added an exclamation point. So that's how we can see that this step through and perform these processes on each one of these by implementing this iPipeline steps and passing that along through. So pretty fancy example here. So I definitely would encourage you to pull down the code, test this one out, and we can see how this can be very effective instead of just writing one big long iterative class, right? And so this is definitely much cleaner and simpler code and a very cool design pattern. So make sure you uh, pull down these code samples here because as always, we provide a lot of good value there. So that's all that we have for today. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment, if nothing else, just to say hello. But let me know what you think of these videos and what would be more helpful. We're always taking constructive uh, feedback. Here at Startup Hack, we love training software developers. With my 25 years of development experience, we take people with zero experience and help to train them to be ready to start as a software developer in as little as three months. Now, remember I said start. I'm not saying they're going to be pro level, but we can get them started in as little as three months. So make sure to check out startuphack.com today and make, and make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment and we'll catch you guys next time. Do you want to start a lucrative? Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.